Caller, you're live on the air. What's your name, comment, and or question? Uh, hello, uh, my name is uh, Elton. Elton, how are and, you today? Uh, my, my comment is this. Um, so I think Trump is by far the scariest candidate on the Republican side for Hillary to run against because all he really has to do, right, because she is always on the wrong side of history. She yeah. flip-flopped on so many issues, you know. All he has to do is point that out, and then also he's donated to her. So he can, like, point to her and mm. say, I bought you, yeah, I bought you. Yeah, you, you I bought you, and uh, you, you did favors for me. Yeah. And, you know, this is the, the biggest problem. And not only that, but the Trump, he, he plays on people's fear, yeah? Mm -hmm. it, it's this fear and this scapegoating, you know, and, and that person is your enemy, and this divide and separate. And yep. that works really well. And if you look at history, it has worked extremely well. The fact that we have the problems that we do in America is because this divide and separate mentality. Because people don't see each other as the same. They see, you know, this, you know, the race issue. Like we can separate people by race, which is ridiculous. Because the thing is that, and I think you've mentioned this before in a, a past uh, uh, episode. When you look at it, when you go down to the economics of things, mm -hmm. yeah, and you look at somebody who is poor and white, yeah and poor, uh, poor and black or poor and Hispanic. In the reality of it, once you get to a certain level of poverty, it doesn't matter anymore, right. yeah? Because the struggle is basically the same yeah. for these people. But that's all I had to say, Ben. I love your show hey. and uh, really appreciate you. Hey, thanks so much for the call, man. I, I appreciate that. I agree with you. At a certain level of, of income, I mean, the, the experiences are all the same. Um, you know, we African-Americans would have the added uh, bonus, if you would, of racism, right? Um, but like I said so many times before, you know, I'm, I'm tired of, I, I am tired of the conversation about racism only because if, if we have to talk about racism to the detriment of economic, of an economic conversation, then you don't know how America works. You, you don't understand what really drives America. The only thing that drives America is money, period. And then if we have to talk about race to the detriment of the economic well-being of the average American, it, it, especially African-Americans, then you don't know how America works, right? So racism is real. Yes, white supremacy is real. Yes, we deal with it every single day. Yes, I, I deal with racism. As a matter of fact, I, was, I dealt with racism today while I was waiting on my train that came extra, extra, extra late and got here extra, extra late. While I was waiting on my train, I stopped and got some sushi and a sake, right? And, and, and then there was a lady, as I sat down, the lady said, you know what? I'm going to go sit over here. And I'm like, Psh, bye, Felicia. Give a damn. <laughs> I had, I got the better seat, but just those little, little things like that, that are a nuisance that if you're on the street with a police officer can turn deadly. Yes. That is a real reality from microaggressions to macroaggressions. Racism is real. However, that's not my day-to-day -day worry. That's not the average American's day-to-day -day worry. I don't have to be worried. I'm not worried about getting killed by the police every single day just when they stop me. <laughs> what I do worry about every single day is the fact that uh, my child care, like I say all the time, I pay more in child care than I do for my living expenses, right? That the living expenses in Boston are so exorbitant that it's just out of control. These type of gas is so, well, gas is better gas is better, but electric is, is so expensive. Like there, there, there are these factors that everyone deals with at a certain income bracket that are on top of us every single day. The fact that we work 50, 60 hours a week and we, most of us are just sharecroppers. I know there's a racial connotation to that, but re in real reality, we are working, giving away our life's labor just so that we can give away the capital that our life's labor earned us to the people who we're working for, that's sharecropping. From one, what Bobby said last week, one of my callers, favorite callers, one of my favorite callers said last week, you know, you 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 work for a multinational corporation, you you rent or you your mortgage is with a multinational corporation, you know, you buy your car from a multinational corporation, at the end of the month, you have nothing left, you are a sharecropper for multinational corporations. So all these people running around here talking about race and dividing us based on race to the detriment of the conversational economics, please go to hell because you are messing up the real, the real problem in America has always been about money. Which is why, let me tell you, I, I, a friend of mine shared an uh, image of a message I sent to him a couple of months back. 
Uh, I sent a message to him a couple of months back about Black Lives Matter with Hillary Clinton. And I said that I liked the way Hillary Clinton liked it. So he took a picture of it and he made sure he held it. And, and, and But I, I have since, you know, I appreciated what she said in that meeting at the time because she was saying we need to fix, we need a, some regulations. We need some economic, we need some policies that are going to fix it. She said, I'm not, I can't talk, I'm not going to sit here and talk about my feelings. Let's talk about some policies. And at the time I'm like, that damn right. Let's talk about some policies because if all we're going to do is sit around and talk about our feelings about racism and never really get to some policies to actually fix racism and the economics of poverty in America, then we're wasting our time. The reason I've changed my mind on that particular conversation is because Hillary has completely flip flopped yet again. She's no longer being the pragmatic person saying, let's talk about some uh, policies. She's the one out here pandering about race and microaggressions and and parading around uh, the the family of the fallen and and she's you know on you know say her name say his name uh, Morgan Freeman doing the voiceover she's no she has completely flip flopped in the middle of the election on black issues and she's no longer talking about things that would be practical she's now talking about things that are just like pointless I'm glad you know their names. But what policies are you going to implement that's actually going to help fix the problem of not only systemic racism, but systemic poverty? I don't even know how I got on this. The call, the last call, that, 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 that really is when we sacrifice the plight of the majority of Americans, which is either poverty or living paycheck to paycheck, and we do so so that we can have a frivolous conversation about how you feel about white supremacy and, and how you feel about microaggressions. Yes, white supremacy is real. Yes, microaggressions, racism happens every single day. Yes, it's annoying. It's all get out. But you know what's worse? You know what's worse than anti-blackness? You know what I, what I deal with more than I deal with anti-blackness, anti-rent, anti-gas money? anti-tuition, anti-child care, not having those things, that's a real, that is day to day living, no matter what color you are. But so long, and this is how we got here, the caller says, so long as they can divide us, right? So long as they can divide us based on, you haven't confessed your white supremacy, or I don't have white privilege. What the hell you mean white privilege? I don't have white, so long as they can divide us along those lines, we won't get anywhere. And this is exactly why Bernie Sanders is facing the uphill battle that he's facing is because we have a bunch of pseudo intellectuals and some genuine intellectuals to be fair, but you have intellectuals in the game who are, who are confusing the conversation to be about whatever their PhD was on instead of being about what's in the best interest for the average American and African American divide and conquer. And they've been doing this for a very long time. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that I want to say right there, but I think I've given you enough. I don't want to take it one step further because there there is there's some value and there's some virtue to the fact that identity politics just ain't working like it used to. Or at least after this election, you could charge it to the game. But we'll talk about that next time. Let me take this caller who's been so patient listening to me yell in the mic.